Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the mini workshop and uh, for semester 2021. Uh, I'm Pei Rong Lee, who is a, a PhD candidate in the Inquiry Methodology program and also is the qualitative methodology consultant in this semester. So today we're going to introduce QDNS which is the qualitative data analysis software. Um, the purpose of this workshop is to give you a very quick overview of what QDNS is. And most importantly is to give you some thoughts or, to, or the starting point before you start to dive in and into any kind of QDNS. So let's get started. Um, what is QDNS? Again, it's qualitative data analysis software. And with the development of a computer, it started to be uh, developed in the early 1980s. Uh, but during that time, it was without commercial in intent. So starting from 1990s, more and more companies are starting to dive into uh, the development of a QDNS, and therefore now most of the uh, packages are for commercial uh, purposes, which means you have to uh, purchase that or subscribe that by paying some fees. Um, Mostly the QDNS packages are, are developed based on a certain kind of methodologies. For example, Atlas TI is good for ground theory and MaxQD is good for mixed methods. And these kind of uh, characteristic or the features were usually shown up in the, uh, the design or the functions in the specific package. So if you have any chance to now, try a little bit of the QDAS packages. You will probably notice some similarity and the differences among each of them. So, before you starting to use any kind of QDAS, these are some of the questions that I would encourage you to think about before that. So, what might be the pros and cons of using any qualitative data analysis software? for your research. For example, they may be efficient, save you some time for data analysis, or maybe the, the advantage of it is for you to easily organize your different materials. For example, your um, literature review, the articles you have, and also different kinds of data you have. Probably some of the limitation or the downsides you want to think about is how specific kind of features the design of the software will restrict or limits your ways of doing your analysis. So there are, for example, here we have a uh, we have a suggested reading from Zhao. Uh, the Rose and Dennis, which they discuss how uh, QDNS uh, packages they may uh, in, they may influence the validity of the qualitative data or your qualitative uh, research results. So this is a good one that you could uh, skim through and think about it before you starting to use any of the packages. So also the other question you can think of is if you are using an, another kind of methodology that is different from what the software were designed for, then what might be the risk? So what does it mean? Earlier I say that most of the QDAs, they are designed based on some kind of uh, um, theories or they are good for a specific kind of methods or methodology. And now thinking, for example, you are using the rate of inquiry, um, maybe you may found the self, some of the software may not uh, support your ways or ideal ways of analysis in the way you imagined it. So think about it, what might be the um, 
uh, possible results or limitations of it? Or how will the use of the software affect your analysis, the result, and the validity? Again, these could be uh, connected and reflected on the paper, suggested paper down here. And I strongly suggest you to take a, take a view of it. So now, uh, here are some of the commonly used uh, quantitative data analysis software packages. Um, there are, of course, more than that, and some of them are free. But these are just some of that are uh, more widely used. For example, in vivo, that uh, if you are a student in IU or a student in the school, IU School of Education, then it's available, currently available um, in, the, in the computer labs. So usually it's uh, the, the feature of it is it's usual user friendly and um, it's, it's more easily for uh, allowing you to um, edit or merge files. Well, for MaxQDA, it's good for mixed methods, meaning they have, it has a, some of the statistic functions or design for it. For example, you could create your own variables or you could directly import focus group transcription. For example, if you, um, edited your transcription with speaker with columns and the software will directly identify it for you and directly auto code for you. So you already have a, a first layer of um, uh, analysis of your, not say analysis, but let's say of the first layer of the uh, feeling of your data. Um, and also uh, another good thing is the window and the Mac system share the same interface. So when you're working with different uh, qualitative researchers, it's easy for you to communicate and look at each other's screen while you will probably not bump into any uh, difficulties in communicating on um, the interface or the functions of Max QDA. Um, so for at less TI, uh, the, some of the uh, some of the good features I found is that it's easily open. You can easily open a, up a document and switch between the documents, and also it has a cloud version that allows uh, easier collaborations. Um, but for some of you may already try Atlas TI or any kind of these software. Of course, you will have more understanding of them than just me introducing here, but it's just providing some of the basic introduction. Last but not least, Deduce, uh, it's known for its web-based feature that everything is, start, uh, is are stored in the cloud. So it's much easier for collaboration. You can uh, work on the project. Everybody can work on the same project in time and you can see what someone else is collaborating and contributing to the project. So usually uh, the, the software will have these uh, commonality. For example, they usually allow multiple data formats uh, most of them supports, of course, text-based data, such as Word document, PDF files, or they also support video and audio data, which right now, a lot of quantitative research, they do video or audio recording while in the field. Um, they also, some of them support survey data, and now more and more studies are doing works with social media. Some of them also support this, for example, to collect uh, web pages or to conduct the uh, Twitter data. Um, some of them also allows you to import your, your um, files from the reference management software. Um, so you could easily manage or do your literature review also using the qualitative data analysis software package. 
Um, not, of course, most of the software they allow coding. And here I put some notes, memos, comments. These software, they are more or less using these work uh, interchangeably, referring to uh, similar functions of their uh, software, just they use different terms. But of course, coding is one of the common and basic practice in qualitative data, uh, in qualitative research. So most of the software support that. Visualization, uh, these visualization differs, um, the level of it differs based on each software. Some of them supports uh, a more open-ended creative ways of coding. Uh, some of them provides more like a statistical presentation of your uh, coded data. So, but more or less, they provide some kind of a visualization for you to see how your current works are, um, going, are, are ha, has been done or is going on. And last but not least, uh, collaboration. As I say, some of the software, they have the cloud version or DDoS directly just allows you to collaborate uh, using uh, their, storing their file or projects in the cloud. So um, these are the common features that most of the software will provide. And some, uh, just a little bit in additional information in case you decide to choose using the uh, QDIS in your future project. In case you happen to want to switch around software, for example, you have availability to mass QDIS for this semester, but no longer, or later on you are using Envivo or Atlas TI and other coursework, but you want to also use your previous project for it, these, uh, these program, REFI QDA, allows you to import, export your project file into a common type of um, exchangeable um, file format. And then later, later on, you can import it into different um, software. So it allows you to basically exchange uh, your project file across different software. So thinking of it, to start, if you haven't used any of these software and you wanna uh, get your feet into the water, um, maybe you could start to look at the software that is available from your institution for free. As I say earlier, for example, our schools, uh, our university, the School of Education, clearly we have Envivo. Uh, or you could try the free trial version of any of them. Most of the software, they do have free trial version um, before you decided to settle down. Or you could uh, watch the videos tutorial or read through their user manual to get a sense of what the software will look like and how or whether or not it, it could support your project in the better sense. And in case if you wanna use the software wisely or more efficiently in your future project, you could look at these, uh, these website, Five Level QDA, that provides some of the structure for you to um, you to uh, work on your project or in a more structured um, and a constructive way. So um, here are some other resources if you ever wanna you know, look at uh, how qualitative data, uh, data analysis software are used in the current qualitative data. Um, Qualitative, qualitative research field, um, or some of the some of the res, uh, resources are useful for you to think of critically to you uh, when you started to use the QDNS. So that's it. Thank you for being here.
And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next mini workshop.